What is the one thing that accompanies the soul after death? The amazing answer to this question sheds light on two important mysteries, namely, what happens when we die and how is it possible to retain memory of our past lives? So let us dive in. Watching all the corruption scandals unfold in India, my mother often remarks, why are people blindly rushing to accumulate so much wealth, property and power? After all, none of these things will accompany them beyond death. And she's right. Whatever be our cherished worldly possessions, those which we mistakenly use to determine our self-identity, such as our job, our wealth, home and car, even our bodily appearance, one day when we die, we shall have to let them all go in one clean sweep. We came empty-handed into this world and empty-handed we shall go. However, while we cannot take our material possessions with us, there is one highly critical yet deeply overlooked thing which we do take with us when we die. This thing is our mind. And unless we have attained to Samadhi in this life, our mind will accompany our soul after death in its journey onto the other side. This fact has been explained by Swami Vivekanand when he said, This Atman or soul goes through birth and death accompanied by the mind. It is only because we are able to take our mind, the real storehouse of all impressions with us after death, that an unbroken continuity can be maintained between all our previous births and the current and future ones. But how exactly does the soul take the mind with it after death? The mechanics of this process have been outlined for us by the great rishis of Vedanta. These ancient sages of India witness certain fundamental truths about the nature of the universe in the advanced stages of meditative superconsciousness. These truths constitute the philosophy of Vedanta. One of the main tenets of Vedanta is that the soul of every human being is encased in three successive bodies. These bodies can be thought of as layers or shells that surround the soul. Swami Sivananda of the Divine Life Society equates this to when we put on three successive layers of clothing. The outermost shell is that of the gross physical body. This is the body we most commonly identify with and it houses the brain and other organs. It is known as the Sthul Sharir in Sanskrit. Behind the gross physical body is an ultrafine, subtle or astral body, also known as the Sukshma Sharir or Ling Sharir in Sanskrit. This subtle body consists of the mind and its components such as intellect, memory, ego, etc. Because the subtle body is a carrier for the mind, therefore it is also known as a mental body. Now one very interesting point about the subtle or astral body is that it appears as a dim vapor-like duplicate of the physical body which cannot be seen by the naked eye. This fact has been revealed by Swami Sivananda in his wonderful book Self-Knowledge. Behind the subtle body and forming the innermost layer is the causal body or Karan Sharir. The causal body is unmanifest. And therefore, I have not drawn it because it cannot be physically represented. Finally, behind the three bodies, as the witness and ruler of them all, stands our soul or Atman, the source of consciousness. Now from this little discussion, we have seen that each individual or Jiva in Sanskrit is comprised of four things. The real self, the Atman or soul, and the three successive bodies that encase the soul. Having attained to this knowledge, we are now in a position to delve into the process of death and rebirth. So what happens at the time of death? According to Vedanta philosophy, at the moment of death, the soul and the inner two cores separate from the outermost covering of the gross physical body and the soul clothed in the subtle and causal bodies journeys on. Thus says Swami Sivananda, death is only a separation of the subtle or astral body from the physical body. Just as a person passes from one room to another, the soul passes from the gross plane of existence to the subtle. Now this subtle body or sukshma sharir, as we have seen earlier, is the carrier for the mind. Till a person is living, he or she is clothed in all three bodies and the mind is merged with the brain and body. But upon death, the physical body is shed and as Swami Vivekananda has explained, the soul goes out and carries part of the mind with it. Furthermore, as both Vivekanand and Sri Aurobindo have revealed, it is our mind and not the brain which is the real storehouse of all impressions or sanskars. Everything that we have ever thought, every action that we have done, is lodged in the mind. 
In the lower layer of the chit or subconscious mind, the impressions of all things seen, thought, sensed and felt are recorded. For this reason, even though the brain has been left behind at death, a lifetime of impressions or sanskars stored in the subconscious mind accompany the soul after death. What's more, since the same mind has been evolving and traveling with us from birth to birth, therefore the impressions of all lives past as well as those of the current one are stored in the subconscious mind. When the soul takes a new birth, this entire library of past impressions can potentially be accessed by the new brain and in this way it is possible to remember our past lives. Now in the normal course of things, these past life impressions remain buried deep within the recesses of our subconscious mind and therefore most people are unable to recall their past lives. However, in certain special situations such as when a soul reincarnates quickly without spending too much time in the subtle world or through hypnosis or through certain highly evolved yogic processes such as kundalini awakening, it is possible to remember events from the immediate or some or even all of our past lives. One of the most famous verses from the Bhagavad Gita which captures these possibilities is when Lord Krishna tells Arjun, Many births of mine have passed as well as yours, O Arjun. I know them all, but you know them not. Even Lord Buddha remembered many of his past lives, including the times when his soul was evolving through animal births. This brings us to the end of our presentation. Thank you so much for watching. If you have further questions in your heart surrounding God, soul, consciousness, life and death, then be sure to visit my website, The Spiritual Bee, at www.spiritualbee.com.